from a physiological standpoint to understand animal locomotive work is to understand that we as a human being are still in a developmental process anatomically. You know, the way our spines are in, in relation, the way the spine is in relation to the pelvis, the way the pelvis is in relation to the legs is very unique for, for ourselves as a primate. First, being, uh, you know, in, in this very simple um, aquatic form, moving then onto land, and from land, uh, you know, being a quadruped, moving from a quadruped, rising up into a bipedal cr creature. Um, really, we're still developing. Um, skeletally, we're still developing the, the form and shape to accommodate this erect position we're in. So really, what happens is the pelvis on an ape uh, sits um, almost square, uh, your iliac crest leaning forward, um, almost sits square with the floor, which is why an ape is, is forward in their action with longer arms, and, and just the way they sit is very particular to the pelvic positioning. So it, 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 it's, it allows for basic uh, quadruped movement, arms and legs moving together, because it tilts the spine forward. As the pelvis for, this, for us, uh, uh, Homo erectus, you know, Homo sapiens, standing upward, uh, the pelvis begins to move into this posterior tilt. It goes from a massive anterior position and, and it moves into this uh, posterior, you know, moving towards the posterior position. And this allows for the spine to then erect upward. So it allows for us more comfort to walk up. But what this does is it puts a lot of stress on the, the, um, the head of the femur. Um, the greater trochanter, which sits in the, the, the pelvic socket. So uh, this used to sit like this, has changed and it rises up. Well, then, and we start to come up to standing like this. What happens is the pressure on this to pop out is greater. So all the muscles that, that wrap across here are under great duress and pressure from, um, from just the changing over the course of time of being erect and trying to stand up because, you know, everything's got to be held back so it doesn't pop out of place, if, you, if, if that makes sense in a very simple way. Um, so when we sit back onto all fours and we get back to our knees, it actually relaxes the, the, uh, the femur it, back in a position. It, it relaxes all of these, um, these uh, all this soft tissue that's literally trying to just hold it into place. So when we move on all fours, when we move from a, these four point bases, it gives us a tremendous um, advantage uh, of, of, uh, and a relief, if you will. Um, the advantage um, is that we now um, learn to um, balance out our upper trunk and lower trunk with each other because if you walk only on the low trunk and you use the upper trunk only to dial the, the phone number of your friend or to text message, you can see the, the great disparity between the strength of these two um, girdles, shoulder girdle and pelvic girdle, even though they're both equally necessary to be an animal. You know, this animal crawls and moves and works with all fours, except now where we've created an environment where we only need to really depend on two legs. You can go out in the world right now and the whole world is designed for two legs. We don't like when there's anything actually disturbing our path as a two-legged creature just moving across the ground. So we make it absolutely, we make our path absolutely safe. And so we don't really have to, we don't have to move around obstacles anymore. We don't have to climb them. We don't have to leap over them, we don't have to pull, put, does that make sense? So, so we've created an environment that's completely artificial to what this animal is designed to do. Animal locomotion has existed in, in, in many, many, many of the oldest movement systems in the world. Kung Fu, specifically, I can just name, They're, the way they understood an animal moving was how it fought. I'm more interested in how animals locomote, not how they necessarily um, fight and use, you know, what's their, what's their specific uh, technique they use to attack. But really, I'm interested in how do animals actually locomote. I'm more interested in making a person uh, a more functional mover, and then they can apply that to whatever they want to. So that's sort of.